1973 Oil Crisis, a documentary by Andrew Alvarez, Michael Omodio, Thomas De Sosa, Danny Lynch, and Andres Uribe. How it all started. The 1973 oil crisis began on October 17, 1973. It commenced when the members of the Organization of Aero Petroleum Exporting Countries, also known as OPEC, announced that they would stop shipping petroleum to nations that had supported Israel in its conflict with Syria and Egypt, which included the United States, its allies in Western Europe, and Japan. This was primarily the result of the ongoing Yom Kippur War. Who OPEC is? OPEC, or the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, is a permanent intergovernmental organization created in 1960 by Iran, Iraq, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, and Venezuela. They were later joined by Qatar, Indonesia, the Socialist People's Libyan Arab Jamahiriya, the United Arab Emirates, Algeria, Nigeria, Ecuador, Gabon, and Angola. OPEC's objective is to coordinate and unify petroleum guidelines among member countries to secure fair and stable prices for petroleum producers, an efficient economic and regular supply of petroleum to consuming nations, and a fair return on capital to those investing in the industry. Not to be confused with OPEC, OOPEC is the organization that consists of all the Arab members of OPEC. The Yom Kippur War and the Arab Oil Embargo the Yom Kippur War began with a surprise joint attack by Egypt and Syria on Israel during the Jewish holiday of Yom Kippur. This was the beginning of the Arab-Israeli conflict, which put pressure on the West from the Arab nations as a result of the West's support of Israel. Because of this Israeli support by Western nations, the Arab world, through OPEC, imposed the 1973 oil embargo against the United States, Western Europe, and Japan. In effect, OPEC cut production of oil and place an embargo on shipments of crude oil to the West, primarily targeting the United States. In essence, the 1973 oil crisis was an extension of this Arab-Israeli conflict. The economic impact. The effects of the embargo could be seen immediately. OPEC, using its seemingly boundless power in the oil industry, radically increased prices. As a matter of fact, in 1974, the price of oil in the United States quadrupled to nearly $12 per barrel. This huge increase in the price of the oil resulted in a major cost push inflation, creating rapid price level increases from 1973 to 1975. In addition, during the same period, the United States employment rate rose from less than 5% in 1973 to 8.5% in 1975. The reason the impact was felt so hard by Americans in specific was because before 1973, People had become accustomed to expanding energy consumption with minimal concerns about the dependability of supply or sharp price escalations. In 1973, the reality of this issue changed drastically and created a tremendous predicament. As a result of the embargo, U.S. imports of oil dropped from 6 million barrels in September of 1973 to 5 million in a matter of months. This nearly 20% barrel drop was completely the result of the oil embargo. The fact is worsened by the detail that in 1973, 36% of energy consumption was in foreign oil. Even though the oil supply had significantly decreased, the daily consumption only dropped a mere 6% from September to February of 1973, and by the summer of 1974, only 7%. This was the first time the United States had suffered from a fuel shortage since World War II. As one can see, even though the supply of oil was severely decreased, the demand barely flinched. The following is an excerpt from a 1973 Time Magazine article that described predictions on what the oil crisis would entail. The first signs of the impending disaster came slowly. Increases in the cost of oil and gasoline, reductions in voltage delivered by power companies during peak hours, and occasional dim outs. But then the pace accelerated as the government began rationing essential fuels and exhorted the public to forsake private cars. The reduced use of automobiles had immediately repercussions in Detroit, where the auto industry began laying off workers by the thousands. Other industries, notably the steel manufacturers, also were severely hit. A domino effect, a factory shutdown, swept through the United States economy. 
This article echoes the high level of concern people had about the oil crisis and the predictions presented weren't too far off. The following are effects that did in fact actually happen as a result of the oil shortage. The American Automobile Association recorded that up to 20% of the country's gas stations had no fuel one week during the crisis. In some places, drivers were forced to wait in line for two to three hours to get gas. There was an instant drop in the number of homes created with gas heat because other forms of energy were more affordable at this time. In 1973 alone, 1,000 gas stations had shut down for lack of fuel and many others had substantially reduced operations. Although the United States saw among the most drastic of effects from the oil crisis, the results of the oil embargo certainly were not limited to America. Much of the industrial world saw sudden inflation and severe economic recession, including high unemployment. United States Government Response The United States believed that an effective way to help solve problems brought on by the oil crisis was to cut interest rates to encourage growth. They believed that inflation was only a minor concern. Though this was the conventional macroeconomic procedure of the time, the resulting stagflation shocked economists and central bankers. In retrospect, many believe this policy lengthened the unfavorable effects of the embargo rather than helping alleviate them. Conservation efforts. In order to conserve oil, the government created various measures, including Congress issued a 55 mile per hour speed limit on highways to lower oil consumption. Daylight savings time was issued year-round in an effort to reduce electrical use. Tax credits were offered to those who developed and used alternative sources for energy, including solar and wind power. President Nixon ordered the Department of Defense to create a stockpile of oil in case the country needed the military to carry it through a time of chaos. Emergency rationing books were printed, although they were never necessary due to the end of the embargo. The crisis also prompted a call for individuals and businesses to conserve energy. A popular catchphrase published in newspapers and other media was, Don't be foolish. Many automotive companies, including the U.S. Big Three, began investigating techniques to increase engine efficiency to increase fuel economy, as well as alternative energy sources. An interesting fact is that in 1974, NASCAR reduced all race distances by 10% in order to cut down on fuel use. At the Indianapolis 500, qualifying was reduced from four days down to two, and several days of practice were eliminated. The embargo was lifted. In February of 1974, with the winding down of the Arab-Israeli conflict, the heads of state of Algeria, Egypt, Syria, and Saudi Arabia began discussing a possible end to the embargo. This end of the embargo finally came in March of 1974 after the conclusion of the Washington Oil Summit. The lifting of the embargo was agreed upon by all Arab oil ministers with the exception of Libya. Although the embargo was lifted in 1974, only a year after it began, many economic problems including widespread unemployment and inflation lingered worldwide. In effect, the embargo opened up a new era in international relations. It was mainly a success for the Arab nations. The oil crisis of 1973 displayed how dependent the Western world was on oil, as well as at the mercy of the Arab nations with regards to oil prices. This debacle truly revealed the vulnerability of the Western world and demonstrated the importance of the delicate relationship Western countries had with the Middle East. Significance through today. The lessons learned from the oil crisis of 1973 hold much value to us today as a result of the deteriorating relationship as well as the increasing dependency for oil Western countries have with the Middle East. In addition, much of the hype to find alternative energy sources plummeted after the 1970s as a result of the lifting of the embargo. However, today, as the United States finds itself in a very similar situation, the quest for alternate sources of energy has again regained momentum. Hopefully, the lessons learned from the oil crisis of 1973 were not forgotten and compromises will come before a similar event appears in the future.